Cycling thousands of kilometers straight, far from home and through foreign countries, is not just physically demanding and a great adventure, it is often, above all, a very emotional journey. We've expected that Eastern Anatolia would be challenging for us in that regard. Now, after cycling about 5 months, covering over 5000 kilometers, we've reached the far east of modern-day Turkey. My name is Arev. It is Armenian for the sun. I got it because I am Armenian. While I would love for that being irrelevant, it unfortunately is not in the east of Turkey. This is a very different episode, as we speak about a topic that is very conflicting for some, including ourselves. We would appreciate if everyone would keep a respectful tone in the comments. Growing up in Armenia, there are many places I only know from folk songs, poems and paintings that reference the time not long ago when Armenians still lived in Bitlis, Van or Ani. Anyone who's familiar with the Armenian genocide might see how cycling through Turkey could weigh heavy on Aros heart. If not, well, this will not replace a history lesson, but there are plenty of credible international sources out there. We'll put some links in the description. Let's just say that it had taken some time for Arif to build up the courage to cycle through Turkey. That being said, until now we have had a wonderful time crossing Turkey and I'm excited to discover the traces of my heritage, but I'm also a little bit anxious. We're just in the process of uh, heading out of Diyarbakir. Let's go to Batman! Da -da 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 I still feel a little bit exhausted. Maybe I have some sort of a mineral deficiency because of the incredible amount of uh, sweating that I do. Let's buy a kaufen. Let's buy a Zimmet. How much? Three. 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 No, good, this Junior. This is good. 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 on the road. Very good. This is good. This is good. This is good. This is There's another huge military base behind us. There's so much police presence here in the city. And actually when we were in Western Turkey and said that we would go in this direction, they all said, oh, what do you want there? There's nothing. This terrorist is dangerous, don't go there. But obviously here people are just as nice. Uh, they're living their normal lives. The standard of living is lower here. And as I said, that state force presence is overwhelming. There's driving trucks around in the city. They look like war machines, but it says police. Doesn't matter where we go in this country, there's a lot of construction going on. And also a lot of new mosques are being built. Now I still feel weak. I think I might have diarrhea as well. Being sick on the road is the last thing you want, and so Matthias pushes through 100 kilometers in a day anyways. Also, we don't spot any bats flying around in Batman. Matthias uh, found the worm showers most here, Mehmet, but we cannot find his address, and the boy is helping us to find him. Huh? What's going on? He's giving him a call. Oh, okay. I think he does it for us, so it's getting cooler here. He also gave us some water. And we are already being treated like king and queen here. Gladly, Mehmet arrives soon after and we get to know most of his family at his nearby childhood home.
while everyone is enjoying dinner, I start a frequent commute between rooftop and toilet. It is probably not advisable to take medication at this stage, but after ending up in hospital back in Greece, Matthias' sole priority now is stopping the diarrhea. <laughs> As the doctor is Mehmet's friend, he allows us to take the IV bag with us, so Matthias can receive the trustworthy looking neon yellow fluid at home. As far as we understand, it is electrolytes loaded with an extra syringe full of magic. Anyhow, after 12 hours of sleep I feel a lot better, which comes in handy as it's going to be a busy day. Mehmet's daughter, she started to work somewhere and today is the first day and we are all going to surprise her at her workplace. Before we surprise the oldest daughter at the dentist's practice, we visit Batman city center, where the youngest puts a strong emphasis on exploring the candy shop. Later, we visit one of Mehmet's friends, where for the first time we get separated when we enter the property. with men upstairs and I'm here downstairs with women, I guess. Şimdi önce içeri. Röz dur kendine. Röysa çekme tam papat yeter Röysa. Deney. Kapat yeter. Beni çekeyim. Tamam yeter. Cebler bak. How are you? I'm five. Hello. Hello. After some interesting conversations and eventually tracking down Rumeysas and Mehmet's three kids, we drive home for dinner. Okay. Rampa. Okay. Uh, okay. He says uh, it's going steep up. I think I know it's, uh, but I think every way goes up steep, so I think it's okay. It's getting incredibly hot. The weather forecast says it's going to be over 40 degrees in that area. Also, I'm still not fully fit. My best guess is that the tap water and Yawaki is not good, not safe to drink. A few kilometers out of the industrial Spatman, the landscape looks much like stereotypical Eastern Anatolia. The villages feel quite remote and seem to lack basic infrastructure. We don't see any shops, no women and children outside, just some men working the vast cornfields. Pedaling those dusty gravel roads makes us hungry, so we briefly return to the main road to search for a restaurant. Someone is already busy with eating. Um, it's after 5 p.m. The thermometer is in the in the shadow, pretty much measuring air temperature. 
so 37 right now. 37. Video. Video. Say hello. Video. Yeah, video. So these nice guys just warned us that in the next Kö, in the next village, there is dogs. Uh, so we shall be slow, Javash, uh, because the dogs can bite us. So thanks for the tip. So these are shepherd dogs and they are, they are not to play with because they are trained to prevent the sheep from going away and also to prevent from other people getting the sheep. Uh, Tobacco, tobacco, tabak. Okay, okay. So here they are planting tobacco. There's a lot of water uh, that's coming down from the river over there, uh, from the mountains, and that's where we're going now. So. Yo, yo, no, 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 no. <laughs> we have, no, no, we have, look, I have, I have had, I have. Kurt! Kurt! Salak a shirt, kiss! No, 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 no. Uh, this is how they do it, okay. I'm like, I got you, okay. No, no, no. It's a traditional scarf, the boy said. So I have my first present here. Because we were able to say thank you very much in Polish, they were really impressed. Also, I believe he was pretty happy to get so close to a nice woman. <laughs> <laughs> How do I look like? You look like a absolutely typical Kurdish woman that is cycling with short pants to the countryside. Very, very typical. Like all the women that uh, we'll see her now will be like, oh yeah, I'm going to do that too. And then, revolution. Okay, let's go. Woohoo! The next morning we continue our way off-road and we leave the fertile lowlands of ancient Mesopotamia behind us. Climbing into the Taurus mountain range again, the landscape gets dry and rugged. First time we can see Van on a road sign. Yeah, I was so excited. Whoa, Van! <laughs> what do we have here? Mm -hmm. Special cheese with herbs, olives, yogurt, rose jam, and some yummy bread. This is more or less typical breakfast. It's an egg dish, but it's contains a lot of tomato, yeah, some yeah. peppers, some onion, and some chili. Yeah. Very tasty. Good night, Dan. No, ah. I'm on. Very dangerous. Uh -huh. Okay. This uh, for bicycle very dangerous. Okay. Way. Okay. Are you understand me? Yes. Yes. Ah, okay. We need to go to Tatvan. Tatvan. Yeah. Tatvan very very dangerous. Wait, uh, be careful. Okay. 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 Probably is because it's small, narrow, and there's a lot of trucks going. So um, yeah, there's nothing what we like, but it's the only way. So what can we do? No, I'm afraid a little bit. <laughs> Okay, this is all what we can do. 
I guess we're lucky that there's still not a lot of traffic because it's very early in the morning. So basically this is the problem. When the trucks come, especially when there's traffic from the front, they cannot get on the other lane. And because there's a lot of bends in the road, they cannot see if they can go on the other lane. Wow, that's very uncomfortable. Okay, apparently that was a close call. Truck party behind us. just passing the second military or military police outpost within one kilometer of road. It has even a helipad, loads of barbed wire fences, watchtowers. I saw an armored car. One of the many things we learned while bike touring Turkey is to appreciate gas stations. Now, uh, while we rarely buy fuel, much like a caravanserai during the height of the Silk Road, they quickly became essential for us. So what can you do here? Sit and wash the feet. And the typical toilets are like this. There is never a toilet paper in the toilet in East Turkey. Instead, they always wash themselves. Actually, these kind of toilets are great for us, for travelers, because they are more hygienic. We don't touch the seat. And you can really get used to it. It's very different life here. Uh, the social construct, how everything works for the people here, how they grow up. And I think it's especially difficult for us seeing how they struggle with things in life that are just not an issue in Germany because they grow up in a society that just makes life very hard for them and I think uh, it's an important reason why we are on this tour to see differences in the world but obviously not everything is great it is really not easy have different feelings you feel guilty because you are able to do this trip even I mean place of birth passport so on to see the world be free right and then you see all the people every day that have so much less freedom it is on us to to learn how to deal with those feelings and just to accept that the society and other countries works differently. Oh, I think it's about the seventh or eighth time today that I draw my shirt in water. Otherwise you would sweat way too much. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks good. Really nice. By the way, a little police car behind me. It's more like a tank. <laughs> okay, and this is Bitlis. Oh. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Never. Wow, stop, stop. All that buildings here, apart from the mosque, obviously, to remind of Armenia. Prior to World War I, a third of its population was ethnic Armenian. In 1915, the 15,000 Armenians of Bitlis were massacred. Today, only some old buildings in the town center stand as a silent reminder. Never. Uh, Particular. We have no time, we have to go. We have no time. Germany. Germany. Alman. Alman. Particular. Bye bye. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you very We have to go. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Very funny, everyone wants to invite us for some tea. 
which is uh, very nice, but uh, sometimes we need to get to places, you know. We are being led to our camping place. Uh, we had some lunch in the city. Um, and the woman of the house, Nejla, she said, oh, are you going to camp somewhere? We said, yes. And she said, well, my son will just have a place for you. And now this uh, nice lad here, Mert, is showing us where we can put our tent for the night and it looks very great. It has been some days since our last proper shower, so a spot for the night with access to a river is, well, necessary. Lake Van. We are most likely to meet Dani again, whom we met in Cappadocia. He said yesterday that he will arrive in Tatman uh, in two days. So that was yesterday. So that means it's tomorrow. <laughs> Everyone is inviting us for joy. Made it to Tapa. Uh, we're almost in the city center. Um, I was just getting some burek and ekmek stuff. There it is. Lake Van was the center of the kingdom of Uratu from about 1000 BC and later of the satrapy of Armenia, the kingdom of Greater Armenia, and the Armenian kingdom of Aspura Khan. To say it is a longing place for people of Armenian descent is a gross understatement. Next, we head to a local bike repair shop. As my front brake has an issue, I couldn't bother to figure out. But now I just put new brake pads um, on it and problem is solved. Okay. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Ezan. Ezan. Allahu Ekber. Ezan. Müslüman. Ya. Ee, no Müslüman. Ya Müslüman olmasan Allahu Ekber. Behind us lays Tatvan. Somehow that city had a very unpleasant vibe to us. We decided not to stay here. Since we left Tatvan in a hurry, sort of, we didn't even go shopping and now we are in a situation that we, again, don't really have food. I mean, we have some nuts and cookies, but no proper stuff for dinner. Then we found this nice place here, uh, which looks to be sort of a outdoor restaurant area, but there's only the children here and uh, a lot of chicken. And little chicken too. Chatting with the girls, I learned that during summer they attend a Quran school. Despite their young age, they wear headscarves because of Matthias' presence. In the meantime, the boys admire our bicycles. Finally, a woman comes out of the house. She says that there is no food, but we may put our tent wherever we like. While we pitch our tent, they suddenly start to demand money. And we're leaving that place. And it's not about the 100 lira, it is that they first said, yes, you can put your tent here. And then, like half an hour later, they realized, ah, maybe, maybe they have money. That's not how it works. Either you're open, we say from the start, okay, you can stay here for that amount of money. But don't make someone feel like he's welcomed. And then later ask for money 
it's a little bit strange. Doesn't make a good feeling because uh, it's not just it's, it's not honest, right? So that's great. We now get to go to a place where we can have some food. We are camping next to a gas station. Smoke coming out of the chimney of the kitchen. And I said it's fine if we camp here, which is amazing for us. The next morning we have a nice breakfast with the son of the owner of the truck stop. Matthias shows interest in Iranian license plates and soon enough we are back on the road. We ride through the mountains south of Lake Van, take a little shower on the go and see countless seagulls despite being hundreds of kilometers from the sea. It kind of makes sense as it is a huge saline soda lake receiving water from the surrounding mountains making it one of the world's biggest lakes without an outlet. Sort of a little salty sea. Never. The tunnel is well lit, but it's very narrow, so we have to we have to push the bikes on the side more. Uh, the air is very bad. There was a sign saying that the tunnel is 2.3 kilometers. This will be fun. Could be 30 minutes pushing through the tunnel. Mm. Amazing. The sight of Aktama Island hits Arafat and she takes some time to video call her dad back home in Armenia. Despite not belonging to the country anymore, this place is omnipresent for Armenians in everyday life. Not only are there countless works of art that reference this rock and lake barn. Soccer clubs, cigarettes, brandies, cafes and restaurants, you name it, proudly wear its name. Anyhow, as it's already getting late, we postpone our visit to the next day. about it since my childhood. But the name Ach Tamaj is about the Princess Tamaj. According to the tale, the Armenian princess was in love with a commoner. This boy would swim from the shore to the island each night, guided by a light she lit for her lover. When her father learned of these visits, he smashed her light one night, leaving the boy in the middle of the lake without any guidance. His dead body washed ashore and it appeared as if the words Ach Tamar were frozen on his lips. I can't help myself, but are all Armenian stories so depressing? What else is there to see? Well, during his reign, King Gagik Arzruni I of Vaspurakan chose the island as one of his residences. Okay, that's good, keep going. Today, the only surviving building from that period is the Cathedral of the Holy Cross because during the Armenian Genocide the church was looted and the monastic buildings destroyed. Oh, come on! In the following years the church was subject to extensive vandalism. Ugh. In the 1950s the island was used as a military training ground and the church was about to be demolished. This is enough! Well, the famous Turkish writer Yashar Kemal used his contacts to prevent the complete destruction and the church became a noted tourist attraction in the following decades. In 2005, it underwent a heavy restoration by the Turkish government, being opened as a museum a year later. A museum? I thought it's a cathedral.
Masa, a Van native, loves to drive his van around Lake Van, enjoying the beautiful landscape and taking photos of vans. Wait, no, that should read birds. You really have to be careful with those people that uh, want to take us uh, everywhere. Uh, My house. Because it's too easy. Yeah, I know, they complain that it's hot like during the day in the van. One, Shehir 2. Shehir 2. Caravan tour. <laughs> Anyhow, we had bumped into him sitting next to his van on Lake Van and he insisted on hosting us at his place in the city of Van to take us on a van tour around Lake Van. During our brief 400km excursion we get to see the road around the lake we are about to cycle, a waterfall, road we will not cycle, seagulls in a river, more checkpoints, old graves and pass by our favorite city so far, Tatvan, and all the road we had cycled already. Oh, and of course, Danny, who had been chasing us for days, is now ahead. That's a big fortification. Uh, can we? Please. It is very steep here, right behind us. It just goes down. Whoa. against the fierce headwind. Why? Trying to catch up with Danny until the late afternoon. Ah. Ah. We did it, yes. Oh, the wind. Mad. Madness, but we did it. We had briefly met Danny before in Cappadocia about a month ago. Cycling with other people can be a challenge, so we agreed to just see how it goes. As for now, everyone is happy for a little change. We pitch our tents and enjoy our last sunset at Lake Van. lunch break in Mura, Mura Dia or something like that. We are now heading out on the main road again towards Doju Beazit, which we will reach tomorrow. We have reached Chaldiran or something like that. It's still in Turkey though. We don't have a visa for Iran yet. Uh, I think it's less than 10 or 15 kilometers away from the border of Iran. One person stopped and said we shouldn't continue further than Chaldiran because it would be dangerous to stay out there. Uh, we don't know how to feel about that. No. And now we're trying to find a place for our tents for the night in this pretty barren landscape. It's also still very windy. We're a little bit on edge. So there's a gas station ahead. Uh, so far, we have very good experiences with gas station generally. Let's hope this one is no different. Went from feeling a little bit insecure 
to feeling really safe. We not only ask all the people from Gaston Lake, from the market and from the office, they approved us staying here. Then we have a dog walking around here, not barking at us, so I guess he will be saving us as well. And just when we went down with our bicycles from the gas station, there was arriving like a huge armored car from the military. And out came two soldiers armed to the teeth. Really beefy guns, a lot of magazines. And Danny, you said they even had granite launchers. Oh look, a car like this one. They checked with their command. They even told the next patrol that we will be here camping. Um, so I think we're good. Pretty good, right? <laughs> After an undisturbed night and a breakfast, we continue our way along the Iranian border, passing countless more checkpoints. So this time they asked to see our passports, but still they're very polite here. It was a very quick process. Looked into the passport, that it's us. Took a picture of mine. Yep, it is. They use it for heating in the winter. Yes. So that was the second time we had to show our passports. We are super, super close to the border now. It's actually the most highly militarized area I've been to in my life. There's another military base up that hill. There's fences, even with signs reading in German military zone, entry forbidden. We stayed three nights in Dorbu Bayazid, which is really only possible because of your support. So a special thanks to our contributors on buymeacoffee.com slash a world bike tour. Good morning. It's 6.45. We still didn't get rid of Danny, Danish guy, still with us, which is cool. Um, and uh, we're heading... Get rid of me. Say hello! <laughs> Good morning. Everyone's still a little bit tired, but uh, we should be so relaxed. No. Right? I am very relaxed. So there it is, Mount Ararat. That's a big one, and not just physically. On most days of the year, one can see it from the living room of the flat I grew up in. Its peak is just about 50 kilometers from my birthplace Yerevan, the capital of Armenia. But it's the first time I see it from this side. It is a snow-capped and dormant compound volcano in the extreme east of modern-day Turkey and consists of two major volcanic cones, Greater Ararat and Little Ararat. Today, the greater one is the highest peak in Turkey with an elevation of 5137 meters. You might even recognize its name from somewhere. In the book of Genesis, the mountains of Ararat is the term used to designate the region in which Noah's Ark comes to rest after the Great Flood. If you believe it or not, you can hire a driver in Doyu Bayazid and visit the spot where they found the Ark. We don't, so we didn't. Ararat also corresponds to the ancient Assyrian term Urartu, an exonym for the Iron Age Armenian Kingdom of Van. Or probably more likely, you just like drinking cognac. I'm sorry, brandy? Thanks for nothing, friends. Anyhow, the image of Ararat is absolutely ubiquitous in everyday material culture in Armenia for many reasons. Like the Italian traveler and diplomat Luigi Villari once fittingly put it, almost the whole history of the Armenian people centers around Mount Ararat. 
Apart from settling the lands around it for millennia, there is historical and modern worship around it, as it was principal to the pre-Christian Armenian mythology, where it was the home of the gods. Unfortunately, in the aftermath of the genocide, Arad also came to represent the destruction of the native Armenian population of Eastern Turkey, or Western Armenia, in the national consciousness of Armenians. Money, 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 This is so saddening to see. Nope. And not just because these kids never got a fair chance. Since Diyarbakir, at the start of this episode, we travel through regions that are, at least since 1917, all predominantly Kurdish. The nine provinces with the lowest GDP per capita out of the total of 81 provinces of Turkey all have a clear Kurdish majority population. Since the 1920s, Kurds and Alevis replaced Armenians as a perceived internal enemy of the Turkish state, facing harsh repressions ever since. I can't put into words how much this upsets me. Over a million Armenians were massacred, driven out of their homes into the desert, being robbed, raped and murdered on the way or at best like some women and children, forcefully converted to Islam and integrated into Kurdish families, deprived of their names, their identity, and this is how people live here today. Omer! Oh, very nice to meet you, Omer. As Turkey's border with modern-day independent Armenia remains closed, we now have to turn north towards Georgia. Despite being so near, my hometown Yerevan is still at least 550 kilometers away. This landscape is so beautiful, so exceptional. Wow. glad that Danny shares this time with us. He helps us reflect our feelings, but also to think of other things, like enjoying the awe-inspiring beauty of the landscape. The computer has been in the shade for the last 15 minutes climbing this road. Still says 38 degrees. It puts an enormous stress on the body. just got a cucumber each, that was really nice. So luckily we can stay here behind the gas station. We bought some water, some lemonades. Uh, we are all pretty beaten up. Danny just said it was a very easy day, right? Hardest day I've ever had. Brutal. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> so we'll just uh, put the tent somewhere in the woods at all. Try to rest as much as we can tomorrow. Uh, yeah, tomorrow's tomorrow. So, yeah. After some exhausting days on the road, Danny even suffered a heat stroke. We eventually make it to Ani. We have visited many UNESCO World Heritage Sites on our journey so far, 
also in Turkey, but this one has a special significance for me as an Armenian. Between 961 and 1045, Ani was the capital of the Bagratid Armenian Kingdom that covered much of present-day Armenia and eastern Turkey. During that time, Ani was one of the world's largest cities with an estimated population of about 100,000. The iconic city was often referred to as a city of 1,001 churches. To date, 50 churches, 33 cave chapels and 20 chapels have been excavated. Among its most notable buildings was the Cathedral of Ani, which, as scholars argue, influenced the great cathedrals of Europe in the early Gothic and Romanesque styles. It shouldn't come as a surprise to you by now that Ani is a widely recognized cultural, religious and national symbol for Armenians. This is such an important, huge cultural heritage. A part of us would have loved not to see this, as it is an unfortunate reminder of Turkey's stance towards its past. The state perceives open discussion of the genocide as a threat to national security because of its connection with the foundation of the Republic and for decades strictly censored it. Turkey's century-long effort to prevent any recognition or mention of the genocide in foreign countries has included millions of dollars in lobbying as well as intimidation and threats. As of 2023, 34 countries, like most of Europe and the Americas, have recognized the genocide, along with Pope Francis and the EU Parliament. Only Turkey, Azerbaijan and Pakistan explicitly deny it. This monument was built for the remembrance of the Turks slaughtered in 1918 by the Armenians in this village. Well, actually, I can't argue against what is written on this monument on the road between Kars and Ani. I know that in 1918 there were some atrocities committed by Armenians in retaliation. It is, however, a little upsetting to see this monument with English inscription clearly aimed at tourists visiting Ani. While it is certainly no excuse, the mass murder of innocent people will usually lead to hatred and more spilled blood. I, as an Armenian, would love to put this to the past and leave it there once and for all. But with Turkey trying to wipe this part of the history from the face of the earth, I'm not sure I can just yet. Oh. Oh. I want some ice cream too. We spent two days in cars, feeling a bit paralyzed. Some houses in the old town still reminded us of streets in Armenia. It really was time for us to head on after nearly three months in Turkey. It's 110 kilometers to the border with Georgia. On the way, we pass by Lake Childer, where we spend a beautiful last evening with Danny the Danish, whose presence really helped to cheer us up in the past weeks. I feel a lot better now. Look, grilled meat, watermelon. There's this very nice man with his family. He's born in that village on the other side of the lake and they immediately uh, offered us some food, which is amazing. Also, Danny is vegetarian and Arif doesn't eat lamb, so I guess most of it is for me. <laughs> I'm gonna eat all the watermelon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. So, <laughs> hands off watermelon.
will go that way towards Georgia, which we'll reach today. And he's gonna head into the mountains behind that building. It was a great time. Not so many tears. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have wipes. Danny, all the best. Right, see you. Joey! <laughs> oh, he's a great guy. Yes. So, we do some shopping to spend our last Turkish lira. Uh, and then, then hit 20, the road. 20 kilometers to the border. Yeah, it was not always easy mentally. I mean, we've talked about this. Uh, it was a very interesting time. We learned so much about Turkey and its people. Uh, we're glad we came, but it's time for, for a change. And that change is behind that mountain top there. Woo. We want to thank you for making it almost to the end, despite the difficult topic of this episode of our amazing world bike tour. Please don't get us wrong, overall Turkey really is an amazing country. The vast majority of the people we met on the road showed us nothing but kindness and hospitality, for which we are incredibly thankful. It is full of beautiful landscapes and history, and we really think it is a great country for bicycle touring in general. Chances are, if you are not Armenian, little of what was hard for me might bother you. Hey there, it seems you enjoyed our video, so why not hit the thumbs up? It makes a huge difference for us to get noticed by a bigger audience. We use as much time as we can to work on our videos, but we found it to be an impossible task to do on the road. If you can spare some money to help us show the world as we see it, that's great. If not, there is more you can do, like sharing our content with other people that might get something out of it. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. We are in Georgia. And may the wind be in your back. That was hello again in Georgian. Gamajova, uh, Gamajova!